the sacred pilgrimages of every cyclist in Bangalore. I often joke that Nandi is probably the only reason I live in Bangalore. Approximately seven kilometer climb. That's about 50 kilometers from the city. So it works out as a really cool climb to just test your fitness. And the idea for the day was to head out to the climb and try and beat my time on this segment. 1915 set back in 2017. The motivation was just to, you know, set up this arbitrary goal to try and improve on this benchmark that uh, I'd set and uh, try and outdo myself. Today I had uh, my namesake, Naveen Raj for company, easily one of the strongest climbers in India and a guy who can really suffer on the bike just for a little motivation. S to start off the climb, a flatter section, 4-5%. power here is a little bit higher than what it should have been, kind of in the high 400s. It's super important to kind of start this climb off right. Being shallow, building speed and carrying momentum is super important. We come to this first left-hander, which is the first sting in the climb. There's no way to go about it besides powering a little bit, but I try to keep it in control here because you can really blow things up sky high if you go too hard. Avoided the dog there, past the check post. This is where the climb settles a little bit and where you can try to kind of find a rhythm if that exists. Keeping it just under 400 watts for about a minute and a half into the climb. Really just trying to listen to the body here and find a rhythm. Uh, trying to let the effort come to you versus kind of chasing some sort of expectation in the head. A reminder to breathe. I'm doing this climb with my big ring. It's a function of not so much choice, but the fact that my left shifter clonked out on me and uh, I just decided that I want to do the KOM today, so stuck it in the big ring because I had no other option. Going pretty well so far, between 375 to 400 watts, just kind of on the higher end of my, my threshold. <laughs> low anaerobic not realizing yet that i'm gonna pay for this um, excitedness yeah when i'm out training i'm usually by myself on the hill really being able to listen to my body i like climbing without data at all in fact but today proven by the fact that my computer is masked up today with a couple motivational words yeah, i always prefer listening to the legs over chasing numbers especially on a day where you want to really dig deep i think numbers can limit you sometimes Just having cameras around and you know friends around and a couple of people I knew on the hill probably led me to digging a little bit, starting off a little too hard. Ideally I should have been around the 360 to 375 marks but oftentimes I was sitting well above it. In the moment it felt okay and it felt sustainable because of the adrenaline I suppose.
Yeah, so in the big ring, 90 RPM. So suggests that the gearing wasn't too bad for this part of the climb. Still cruising pretty well at the 400s, but my heart rate's pretty much close to what my capacity is for a 20 minute effort. I'm a couple beats per minute shy of what I would ride at capacity for a 20 minute effort with more than two thirds of the climb to go. Had a water bottle on the bike, but took my last swig of hydration before I started the climb. There's always that when you take a swig of water during an all-out effort, your heart rate just kind of loses that rhythm a bit, and I just wanted to avoid that. So kept the bottle in there just to for the aerodynamics. Standing efforts that I'm making in between was a little bit unnecessary. Not the most efficient way for a 70 kilo rider like me to climb, but yeah, sometimes you just gotta ride on instinct. Breathe. Breathe, baby, breathe. A little bit of self-talk there. This is probably one of the wider sections of the climb where you really kind of feel that non-favorable wind coming off my left shoulder. The power is still holding steady but I'm close to my capacity and my heart rate so I don't know any of this of course while I'm riding since I've chosen to go data blind on the day. This is about the point where I was starting to feel not like a rock star anymore. Yeah, I've got a 53.39 up front and 25.11 in the back. Take my 25, 23, 21, saw quite a bit of action on the day, given that I was stuck in the big ring. This is where I kind of touch my capacity. 174 is kind of the higher end of what I hold for about 20 minutes to 40 minutes. That's bad news bears, but I don't know it yet. Now we're reaching the halfway point of the climb, the big U-bend that everyone who's done Nandi knows about. It's kind of the saddle point between Nandi 1 and Nandi 2. It's where you switch climbs. The characteristic of the climb completely changes. The gradient of the road changes. Uh, the wind direction changes. You can see that wind that I'm talking about here in this shot pretty much smacking me in the face here and I felt it at this point, I was feeling it. And you'll notice that my heart rate's actually coming back down under, under 174, under my capacity a bit and it's a little indication that I've actually blown and I'm just trying to salvage really at this point. A bit of surge to hold on 
keep fighting. We've reached the halfway point, and interesting fact about the halfway point, it's four kilometers up the seven kilometer climb. But essentially, whatever time you hit at this halfway mark, double that, and that ends up being your time to the top. So if you're a first time Nandi climber, that's a little metric you can use. Or if you're a experienced rider, that's a little metric you can use to pace yourself. Now we get into what I'd actually call the climbing. Uh, the gradient goes above 6% and I feel when you're 70 kilos, 60 to 70 to 80 kilos, that's where the difference and the watts per kilo factor kicks in because you're not going so fast anymore. And there's two little dips on this part. I'm not a big fan of it because it really throws off your heart rate a bit. You can't put down a lot of power here, so you see the power going under 300s here because you start building speed when you go downhill and yeah, no matter how hard you push on the pedals, there's no resistance to push against. And I kick up after that little downhill, make it to the crest of this little riser. And that's followed by another little downhill section to ruin that heart rate and that rhythm a little bit. Into the downhill belt, you see the power coming down under 300. There's no way to hold on to that power on this downhill bit. So you get a little bit aero, just look back for the car that was potentially going to pass. Slingshot into the next riser. And this is where you really have to build yourself up mentally to take on the last bit of the climb. Because after this, it just gets hard without any letting up till the end. And this is probably the last bit on this climb where I'll see anything close to 400 watts again. Because after that last little sprint that you saw me make out of the saddle, I was done. At that point, I knew my job for the day was just to get to the top. I would have liked to get off the bike, but I've never stopped, I think, midway during a Nandi climb, and I've done about probably 800 of them, so I wasn't going to do it today. Now start the hairpins, which is characteristic of this part of the climb. This first little pitch, um, I like to call the stairway to heaven or stairway to hell if you're having a bad day. The key here is just kind of not blowing up. The urge is to go at a 450 watts in this because that's where you feel like you're moving, but you really just have to control it here else you're really gonna pay for it the last two and a half to three kilometers, so. Nice and controlled, churning butter at 60 RPM, keeping the wattage. A little bit of encouragement for the rider there. I get some back from the passing rider. I guess karma is real. Oh, that's just an ugly climbing style, but that's the way I do it. Gradient data actually isn't really representative of the steepness of the road. I think it's because it's uh, computed it's based on parametric pressure, right? Being computed data, the gradient data isn't as accurate as on screen. Yeah, this is definitely close to 9%. You can tell by the speed at which I'm going. I'm moving pretty slow here, about a kilometer an hour slower than what I would have been moving if I could ride 375 to 400 watts, which is what I should have been doing. 
and you can tell I'm going hard because my heart rate's now going above its capacity for 20 minutes cross that 174 into the 175s shooting through the roof a bit starting to cry for my mom but once you get through this bit on the climb it starts to level off a bit back down to six seven percent a little bit more manageable really getting through that bit is a mental battle more than a physical one most first timers up the climb if they do give up it ends up being on this section so my advice to them is if you can just push past this just remind yourself to count one pedal stroke after the other you should be able to get all the way to the top Right about here, I'm just thinking to myself, keep it above 300, which is really my tempo kind of zone. Of course, I didn't have access to the numbers, but I was just telling myself by feel, don't let off the pressure because we came here to get this KOM. bobbing all over the bike, lactic coming out through my ears, wishing I had a small ring. The last couple switchbacks, uh, Nandi are numbered, but to be honest, even after climbing this hill, close to 800 times, I still don't know how many switchbacks are there. When you're climbing up easy, you're just appreciating the scenery. When you're going hard, the numbers all seem a blur. At this point, it was just get to the top, one pedal stroke after the other, which is kind of hard to do because I have no sense of where I am in terms of the KOM, right? So it's a lot of internal motivation and commitment to finishing what I started. well under my threshold here, just salvaging whatever shred of a chance I have to come and get close to that time. Last kilometer of Nandi was covered in a really nice mist on the day and uh, temperatures were actually good for a, for a all-out effort. I don't even remember sweating too much. That's how, that's how perfect the temps were on the day. Picture of a cyclist with terrible form cracking through the fog can't beat that this is the last hairpin one last anaerobic effort but the legs didn't have much to give at this point if 
but you can really lose a KOM if you take it easy on this last bit because kicks up to 15 and someone's terrible attempt at a joke was not to end the segment at this arch but at a tree a hundred meters down the road cruel cruel segment creator and that's the end that hurt me. That's probably the hardest I've gone since my sixth place at a Cremes somewhere in Belgium last summer, chasing a Lotus Huda under 23 development rider. So that hurt. That was hard. I don't want to find out my time. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. 1920. Oh. Five seconds short. Ah. 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 There's a bit, it's a bit of a headwind on a couple of the short sections where they're going really slow. So instead of going like 20 on the steep bridge, I was going like 18. I could feel it. Ah, that was hard. Ah. Oh. Uh, I'm pretty sure I set a power PB though. Let's see, last lap, I don't know. I didn't hit lap, so I'll have to wait till I go home to see it. But pretty sure I set a power PB. Ay, ay, ay. Done. I think I'll probably try it again next week. <laughs> uh.